Uh, thank you for having me. Welcome to Pathways. Um, I have, I think this is only the second time for me to join a Pathways event. <laughs> so I'm also excited. I'm happy to be here. Uh, as Kay Albert said, yeah, I just made um, my um, lifelong vows. I took my my uh, lifelong vows to live as a single for the Lord uh, brother as a, as part of the servants of the word. Uh, which is which is a missionary missionary brotherhood. Um, we we have three houses here in Manila, and I've been living in Manila since 2013. So ilan years na? Um, and naman medyo sanay na ako dito. Medyo sanay na ako magcommute. Medyo sanay na ako mag ano mag um, uh, joke. Uh, iba rin yung, yung, yung um, humor dito. So, medyo sanay na ako, medyo. But yeah, I'm very happy to be here um, to share some things with you. Um, again, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm still younger than most of you, so I'm not going to even assume that, uh, that I'm going to share amazing knowledge with you, but I will share my thoughts. I will share some of my perspectives. Uh, some of it may be coming from um, uh, the work that I have done with uh, young people and the people I serve in CYA. Um, and um, how the Lord has been, been giving me insight into different things um, as we go along. So I'll also just uh, share my screen. Uh, so you can follow along with me uh, as I uh, share my thoughts. Para ayos din. Yes, namaste. Uh, and I hope um, you know there's there's something to take take away from my sharing. Uh, I also honor Arlene. She had she had a very um, very good sharing and some of her thoughts and her encouragement for us. So yeah, let's let's uh, <laughs> let's keep that in mind. Um, well, as I said, yeah, that's that's me and um, uh, part of the servants of the word, and uh, that's the that's the group of uh, brothers I live with uh, in Pasay. Uh, it's our new house in Pasay, um, malapit sa Libertad Station. If you guys are aware, Libertad LRT Station, malapit doon. Um, and so we're ten brothers uh, in the house. Uh, six of us are. Are, have made our, our lifelong vows, and then there are four um, who are uh, still investigating if they want to uh, live this way of life. Yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe enough about me right there. Maybe I'll come back to a few more uh, uh, of my own stories later. But I wanted to give a few uh, perspectives here. One, I just see Dean uh, Carnazes. No, he is... Uh, an American runner, uh, and I think uh, a few of my stories here will, will be about running because I really enjoy it. I, I, I run um, for to exercise, but I really enjoy it. Uh, Mid-distance runner now, mid-distance. 10 to 15 kilometers now. In the, <laughs> not the long distance. Uh, so this is Dean Carnazes. He ran 50 marathons, so 50, 42 kilometers in 50 days, 50 consecutive days in the 50 states in the U.S. So every day, may marathon siya in a different state for 50 days consecutive. This is, one, this is in, in the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, it's going to be hard to break. Uh, it's one of the amazing stories uh, about uh, in the field of running. And there is a pa. See si Pat Farmer to Pat Farmer. He's also he, he's actually Australian. Uh, he's also a very long distance runner. Uh, and Nance, I, I I I know about him because he ran uh, from the southern tip of India to the northern tip of India, all the way across the whole country. Now four thousand four hundred kilometers in. Uh, 64 days, 64, 65 days, ganun. He ran all across India, um, 4,400 kilometers, about 80 kilometers a day. 
<laughs> yung average niya. Uh, yung mo, through the mountains, all of that. Um, and then, hello, finally, this is um, medyo idol na to. Idol na talaga to. Uh, if you don't know, he's a, he's a Kenyan athlete, Elliot uh, Kipchoge. And he has the fastest marathon time. World record, two hours, one minute. Uh, is 42 kilometers in two hours. Um, and yun, he, nag, nag-break din siya ng, ano, ng two-hour barrier, one hour 59, pero uh, hindi naman siya official marathon. He did it with, uh, with his own setup. Pero again, very, very impressive. No? And the reason I share some of these stories is for me, uh, when I run, I realize that it's really my mind. My mind is under so much pressure, even more than my body. <laughs> your body is under pressure. But your mind is always telling you, once you get to a certain point, and in, in the running terms, if you, for those of you who already run marathons or you know, run long distance, you realize that they call it the wall. You hit a wall at some point when you're running. And um, the interesting thing is, it's your mind that's, that then has to keep pushing you to go. Um, but some of these stories are so inspiring because it shows you that there's, there's so much strength in our mind and we might not always realize how much strength our mind has, how much we can go beyond what we think we can do. Uh, and that's where I want to begin today. Uh, our, our topic today is the renewal of the mind. You know? uh, and some of these stories just talk about the power of our mind. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how much uh, our mind can, can push itself. Um, and of course, we also, we also realize I mean, may, uh, in, our own, in our own experiences that that's, that's where we, we find it more challenging. Uh, that's also one of the most uh, gratifying things. Like you're able to overcome something, uh, overcome an exam, overcome uh, an important challenge, an important presentation, or an important milestone. It also uh, strengthens you for the next phase. Uh, and so the power of the mind. But at the same time, our topic is not just the power of the mind, but it's the renewal of the mind. Why do we need renew? Uh, let me look, let me read a passage here that uh, actually uh, kind of breaks the breaks apart this um, topic. Romans twelve, verse twelve. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove that the will of God, prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. May, may assumptions dito eh, that our mind kind of tends to conform to the world. And that's why it needs to be transformed. But let's just uh, quickly, we'll come back to this passage because it's one of the important passages here. Uh, but even before we do that, I want to also just discuss our mind. We saw some of the things about the beauty of the mind. No? <laughs> uh, how, how incredible it can be. But uh, there's also another aspect there. The purpose. No. Genesis 1, 27 gives us both. God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over all the earth and everything that creeps upon the earth. We were made in the image of God. Beyond any other animal, any other thing in creation, we resemble God the most. And we resemble Him because we resemble His mind. We were a thought. We were His creation. And He gave that to us as well. Our purpose is definitely to glorify God. It says here to have dominion over the earth. But it's also 
uh, that we are made in God's own image and we are given His mind. Of course, not completely, but to the extent that He was able, He, he decided to give it to us. We resemble God and His mind. And that should give us a lot of confidence in how much uh, God loves us. No. Our mind, very similar to the mind of God, can create. Of course, as, as we create, we also have we can also destroy it. Our mind also has the power to memorize, to create memories, to remember it over many, 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 many years. Oh, your pinaka earliest memory ko grade three pa lang. But uh, I'm sure there are people, I, I, when I talk to people, I, they, they tell me, oh, I remember grade one, I remember something kin in kinder. For me, grade three pa lang. But um, yeah, our mind has the opportunity to store so much over many, many years. And then for us to go back and recollect and bring it back to our memory, relive it if we want to. Uh, Henry, we don't always want to live in that nostalgia, but yeah, that's there. It's available to us. And then willpower, which I spoke about and I, when I gave some of the stories at the start. No. And that's our mind. Very, very powerful, creative. Uh, and, and this is how we, we resemble God in all of this. But as I said, the passage in Romans 12, it says, do not be conformed to this world. If our mind was created in the image in how God is, why, why do we resemble things in this world? Why do we have to fight so much? That's it. expectation doesn't match reality. I'm sure we have experienced it. <laughs> Um, it's a pa. And then, man, no, fast food. <laughs> Expectation very rarely matches reality. <laughs> so fast food. You know, you know, uh, no, chicken, burgers, tapos yung dating sa plato. Ah, ganun lang pala. Naka-disappoint minsan, no? But, um, I don't know, for a lot of our own situation, maybe, <laughs> some of us, some of us resonate with this. Work from home, <laughs> multitasking, trying to try to do so much. Um, a lot of times, the expectation or the ideal doesn't match reality. Let me give us three things which have become more natural for us as uh, human beings. Uh, one, we desire pleasure. We, sometimes it drives us. We look for pleasure. We look for that kind of happiness that we, we think we can find in something, in doing something, or in trying out something, or in experimenting, or in, um, in other ways. We look for that pleasure. Just um, stay with me. Second, we look for comfort. Uh, my experience also, and may trabaho, pero uh, muna, ang konti, you know, uh, before we get to the next, before I get to the next project, before I get to the next step. Um, protecting ourselves. It's a very, these are very natural tendencies that we have. Very, very natural to us. No? Um, but when we overdo them, or when we allow these natural tendencies to become what dictates how we act, it's because of this that we act that it tends towards something that's wrong, something that's evil. It ends up making us selfish. When our tendencies drive our actions. Our mind, as I was saying, is so much more powerful than that. And I was talking about the beauty and the purpose of the mind. Let me share one 
passage here which will bring that out a little more. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. When we are selfish, we forget to love. <laughs> when those natural tendencies become something that dictate our actions, our mind is more concerned about my comfort, my, my uh, pleasure, or even to protect my family, protect people who are close to me. Yun lang nang iisip natin. And then we tend to become more selfish. And we forget love which is the purpose that God created us for, which is the purpose of him giving us our mind to be able to overcome just those desires and go beyond. Renewal of the mind is really going beyond just our natural tendencies. To come back to to what we, where we started, the beauty and the purpose of our mind. I hope it's getting clearer for us. I mean, hindi man siya new, completely new for us. But I hope it's getting clearer why we talk about renewal of the mind. Um, it's not always wrong, but when certain aspects, when certain tendencies drive our actions, drive our thoughts, drive what we do, we tend to selfishness and we forget love. And so we want to go back to the purpose that God created us for. God created us for love. Okay. I'll jump to the second half of my of uh, what I have to share here. Uh, it's, the, it's really talking about the renewal of the mind. You know? uh, as we were saying, really, we need to renew this aspect uh, so that we are not just looking at our natural tendencies, but we're really looking at God and trying to take on his mind. We are created in his image and we're trying to take on his mind even more. Uh, and I hope that's, that's our effort, our prayer, our um, consciously uh, moving towards that. And let me share a few things here that might actually help us or realign some of our uh, some of the things that we have been experiencing. Okay, four, four aspects about renewal of the mind. First, accept that we need to be renewed. The moment we accept that these natural tendencies of ours are, can sometimes uh, let us go out of hand and let things go out of hand. They take control over us. I'm not in control anymore. We need to accept that so that we can actually be renewed. And accepting that requires humility from our side to say, I'm made in the image of God, so let me submit to God. I'm made in the image of God, and so let me submit to God. We've all heard this, diba? Follow your heart. Nami basis, I think even on social media, and even in conversations, oh, follow your heart. Okay naman yun. In some case, in some some situations, in some cases, but I find it hard to just accept that it's always true. Because when you say follow your heart, if your heart is as aligned towards those natural tendencies, that's what you're gonna follow. That's what you're gonna yearn for. That's what you're going to try to do. So, from my perspective, I would encourage us rather than just follow your heart, let's change that to test your heart. Test your heart. Remember that we have this tendency to be selfish. We have this tendency to forget love. And so whenever you're drawn to something, test your heart. Ask that question, which will bring more acceptance that, yeah, I need to be renewed. My mind needs to be renewed. Okay. Second, let the truth guide you. What is truth? The famous question in Pontius Pilate. Now, what is truth? <laughs> it is the word of God. We are made in the image and likeness of God. And that is the ultimate truth. 
Let us base ourselves, let us gain from there. If, you're, if we want to take on the mind of God who created us, and if we want to find our purpose, let us find it in God's word. We can take on God's mind if we find his word speaking to us, speaking into our life. And let that guide us. I found it, I found it so uh, encouraging that when I have a hard week, and then usually Sunday, I try to, I really try to spend a longer time in prayer. Sometimes Saturdays. So hindi super busy on Saturdays. I try to find a, a longer time of prayer on Saturdays. And I realize that sometimes the Lord really speaks into my situation. His word brings out uh, confidence or assurance or correction for my situation. No? Uh, and so, kung may time, if we have time that, that we can set aside to do that, let's do it. Days that are not super busy. Uh, let's try to learn from the word of God. Discern your sources. That's another aspect of truth, diba? Right? The world gives us so many things and Romans 12 says, do not be conformed to this world. Don't just accept everything as truth that comes to us. Discern. Yung sources natin. Where are we getting our information from? Yun yung mga hashtag ng mga millennials, say no to fake news. No? Pero for us, I, I think it's, it's important to also understand that, that we need to discern our sources uh, if we if we want to be guided by the truth definitely the word of god but also combined with what's really happening in the world uh, and how can we contribute how can we support how can we really make an impact all right okay ba i'll move to point 3 which i think is the biggest point for me in this entire um Discussion. Take every thought that comes to your mind captive to Christ. Take every thought that comes to your mind captive to Christ. That's from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll read it. But let me give us a background, a little more of a background view. I put down three statements, so indulge me. Hindi naman to super theological. Hindi naman siya. Uh, very, baka hindi rin very, very sound, no? So to may corrections kayo sa akin, okay lang. But let me give, give us three statements. And this is all in the context of our mind. And usually, that's where the battle is. Our biggest battle, or our biggest battlefield, is our mind. Even more than what we face in the, re in the real life, the situations of maybe persecution, maybe challenges from, from work, from your boss, from, from colleagues, from friends, from family, all of that. But our biggest battle, I still feel, is in our mind. So my three statements are, if we are giving up during the battle in our mind, we will rarely even attempt the battle in our lives. If you're giving up the battle in your mind, kung nag-give up ka dun, you will very rarely even attempt the battles in your life. Yung tendency mo is to give up. No? Give up on relationships. Give up on friendships. Give up on your marriage, give up on your vocation, give up on your career. I, I, it, can, it can get out of hand, yes, but I don't, I don't think a lot of us are there. But if we're giving up in the battle in our mind, we'll rarely even attempt the battles in our lives. If we're losing, we're not giving up. We're fighting, but we're losing the battle in our mind. We will be discouraged with the battles in our life, and they will weaken us. We won't, we're not giving up, but we're losing again and again. It will bring discouragement. But if we're winning the battles in our minds, we will find grace and strength 
to keep fighting the battles in our lives, even if we lose them. Means and even if we lose them, if we're winning the battle in our mind, by the grace of the Lord, we will have strength to keep fighting the battles in our life. Laban lang. It's not just in our life, but it's winning the battle in our mind. And that's bringing back the point we were discussing, taking every thought captive to Christ so that he can bring healing, he can bring strength, he can bring correction, he can strengthen us to start winning those battles in our minds. That battlefield is an important battlefield, mga kapatid, for us, especially today, especially in our, in our current situation. Take every thought captive to Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Obeying what Christ finally tells us. Taking our thoughts and bringing it before Christ, bringing it before the Lord, and then obeying that until our obedience is complete. Not, not uh, being satisfied with disobeying minsan, but really striving to win those battles. Win that, that battle in our mind to obey Christ. Um, I hope this, this aspect really, really uh, enriches us because I think this is the main point of, uh, my, of this topic, taking every thought captive to Christ. I have another uh, quote here. This is from a, a, C, uh, a co-founder, CEO of, of one of um, an entrepreneur uh, helping company. He helps people find funding for their new businesses. Uh, but he says, and it's very, it's very impactful. It's also very scriptural. You know? Think for yourself, not about yourself or not of yourself. Don't think about yourself, but think for yourself. And think of others, not for others. Don't think of yourself, but think of others. And don't try to think for others. Allow them to think for themselves as you think for yourself. Strengthen them. Support them. But I want to highlight the think of others here. Not of yourself. Think of others. And that's going back, taking every thought captive to Christ because Christ wants us to journey and win the battles in our minds. To be able to overcome our selfishness and bring back love in a very, very powerful way in our life. All right. I'll go, I'll go to our, my last point here. Rely on your support system. One thing went along. No. This is the group of brothers I very recently ran a half marathon with. 21, 22 kilometers naman. So, and we ran it together. Um, it was it was it was very impressive because it was the first time for all of us to run a half marathon. Um, and when we finished, the only <laughs> the biggest learning, di naman the only learning no, pero may hugot kasi pagod ka <laughs> na. Ano na nagi nagi isip mo, gutom ka, you're thirsty, you wanna you wanna just lie down, dun na lang sa kalsada. <laughs> um, it's it was very impressive to hear from the brothers and say, I would not have made it if I was running this alone. I would not have finished that 20, 21 or twenty two kilometers if I was running it alone. It's um, very, very helpful to be running this race with others. This renewal of our mind doesn't always just come with your own willpower. No, it comes by the grace of the Lord and by the support of brothers and sisters around you. 
Um, I remember when I was still, a, I just graduated from college. I was my first job and um, I knew I was not in a very good place, but I was, you know, uh, I was really trying. And at some point I told my the, the brothers in my group, in, in my small group, that, okay, brothers, I want to really make a decision that for the next year of my life, I'll focus on my family, my work, and my service in the youth group. I won't get into a relationship for the next year. And I remember that during that year, since it was the first time for me to say I won't get into a relationship for this one for one year, uh, very intentionally. Uh, I had a few times where the brothers who were, who were around me, who were in my small group, would pull me aside and kind of nudge me and say, bro, you remember your decision? Why are you hanging out around this, around this, this sister so much? Like, you're always around this sister. What's happening? Um, it, was, it was an encouragement. It was, it was a correction, but it was also an encouragement for me to live out my commitment faithfully. Your support system is very, very important, mga kapatid. Let me read us one passage here that will kind of summarize some of this. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, because the day is drawing near. Let's really look for support from our brothers and sisters. And also let's look to support our brothers and sisters. Let's not be afraid to, to remind them about their own commitment. Let's not be afraid to, to remind them uh, our natural tendency is pag, uh, pagod ka na, uh, disappointed ka na, you're angry with someone, you're, you have a challenging relationship, you have a challenging work-life balance. Uh, to give up, to stop doing the things that we're supposed to do. And let's encourage one another to keep pursuing that renewal of our mind, aligning of our mind to the Lord. Recap lang quickly the four things. First, accept that we need to be renewed in humility. Let the truth, the word of God, guide us. Let's take every thought captive to Christ and obey, obey Christ as we take every thought captive to Christ. Let's win those battles in our minds. Let's not give up and let's rely on our support systems. Let's rely on our brothers and sisters to walk with us, to challenge us. That's, that's it, mga patid. I, I think these last two passages from Scripture will also just help encourage us. One of it we looked at earlier. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And we were called to freedom. Don't feel that this renewal of your mind is uh, taking away that freedom from you. No. The more we align ourselves to the mind of God, to what God wants, the more free we are. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh but gain victory in serving one another in love. Our goal is love and to take on that mind of Christ, the mind of God, and really to be renewed and transformed so that we can really become instruments of the Lord in our own lives. Amen.